dashing through pages. Chronicles, Gospels, Prophets, Sages, Leviticus, Laws, the Pauls, find phrases. Turning them corners, your spiritual mazes. Genesis to Revelation, so divine. Flip them scripts, endless grace, you'll find. Songs singing sweet, unbroken lines. Hitting that rhythm, wordplay refined. Anybody in here blessed? Spiritual breakfast, soul food dinners Isaiah's vision, Ezekiel's figures Walk through the fire, no one limbers Kings and judges, prophets profound Plowing the word, no mythical ground Verse after verse, wisdom's bound Heavenly soundtrack, soul serving sound All divine routes Listen to the whispers No room for doubt Parables drop stronger than gold faucets Souls hydrated from divine prophets Study the book, change perspectives Carefully crafted, not too subjective A year to reflect, learning perfect Patterns of grace that time can't deflect Old Testament drops deep and so real Kings and warriors, covenant seals Split that red sea, divine reveal Commandments written, not made of steel Bethlehem birth to cross on the hill Unfolding the navy blessings, cast with skill Scripture flip, every verse fulfilled Through the word, every verse, every, every chapter, nothing unheard Everybody in here blessed, I'm blessed Everybody in here blessed, I'm blessed, yo. Yo, online sermons, holy vibes delivered, spreading light, got the sinners reconsidered. Psalm the psalm, man's like a holy DJ, flipping through scripture, repping the Yahweh. Your emotes in the chat, praising the message, flat cap on point, teaching eternal lessons. Everybody in here blessed, I'm blessed. Everybody in here blessed, I'm blessed. Old pulpit, preaching like a pro Followers grow as the faith overflow Keyboard clicks, holy words they stick Raining blessings down with a slick rhyme trick Virtual congregation, united in devotion One year strong, a spiritual promotion He's a life coach with divine instructions Streaming holiness, no room for interruption Flat cap, change the game, new pastoral fame Virtual shepherd, he's embracing the mainframe In the comments, affirmatives and amens With each Goliath tackled, faith extends Everybody in here blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. Everybody in here blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. Yo, online sermons, holy vibes delivered, spread in light, got the sinners reconsidered. Psalm the psalm, man's like a holy DJ, flipping through scripture, rapping the Yahweh. Your emotes in the chat, praising the message, flat cap on point, teaching eternal lessons. Everybody in here blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. Everybody in here blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed Digital pulpit, preaching like a pro Followers grow as the faith overflow Keyboard clicks, holy words they stick Raining blessings down with a slick rhyme trick Virtual congregation, united in devotion One year strong, a spiritual promotion He's a life coach with divine instructions Streaming holiness, no room for interruption Flat cap, change the game, new pastoral fame Virtual shepherd, he's embracing the mainframe In the comments, affirmatives and amens With each Goliath tackled, faith extends Everybody in here blessed I'm blessed, I'm blessed 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 Digital pulpit preaching like a pro Followers grow as the faith overflow Keyboard clicks, holy words they stick Raining blessings down with a slick rhyme trick
Should be good good now. No, it's not that I hit was muted. Every once in a while, it just takes and it says device is equal to zero 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 five seven nine six three four two something, and it just rattles off a random series of numbers and says that's your microphone for today, my friend. Enjoy, Electropod. Good to see you, by the way. That was an extra high pipe this morning. Yay! Hey, Galaxy. Tip of the cap, friend. Tip of the cap. Yeah, always some gremlins to run into the system when you're gone a few times. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. Uh, yeah, no, no. Good on the message to let me know. But I got the ear pod in so that I I usually do, but occasionally I forget. So, now your message was good that there was no sound. There was no sound. You were accurate. You were accurate there, Electropod. So, Galaxy, spot of tea, my friend. A spot of tea. I have English English breakfast today. And uh, I just yesterday filled up both of my canisters uh, to the full from the bag. And uh, emptied out the bags I have. And I just got new bags. So uh, Prime Days. I got, I got my uh, Earl Grey and um, English breakfast refills. So I should be set on tea for quite some time. And I brought back vanilla. Brought back vanilla from Mexico. So I don't usually drink that when I'm on stream, but I'll be able to have vanilla chai lattes in the afternoon. So hope all of you are doing well, doing good. I'm going to be all out of sorts today. Uh, but I'm, I figured I'd keep the vaca vacation vibe going. I've got the uh, fruit, fruit, uh, fruity pep, no, Fruit Loops toucan uh, on my shirt. Not exactly the same guy, and I was didn't see any, but uh, it just it just felt like a good shirt to wear today. So let's take a look around. If you weren't, if you weren't, what were you doing the whole time I was gone? If you weren't hanging out over on my other channel, um. And watching the fish cams, we, we can't, and I don't understand why this does it. Stream Deck, I just did a, had to do a full reload, reboot of the computer with updates, and now Stream Deck is not working. Uh, so there we go. Switching over to the pond for just a moment. In case you weren't hanging out all last week. Look at that red one. Boy, that, that couple of vibrant red guys in there. In the tank. Right. And yes, From those will be males. The females are not vibrant. The females aren't and don't need to be with fish and birds often. Place the males have to be land. to but attract females. Guitar in the breeze. The fish and, uh, oh, well, there's that cam is having problems. Watch the fish Sorry, didn't mean to do that. Along to the rhythm of his song. Flat cap pastor shows the way. Sunrise Street coming up. Life, come coming your way. With his cam, he shows it all. With his cams, he shows little it all. Go big and small. <laughs> I don't have the littlest fish either, so the, the fry. Um, I might have to post a, another pic on Discord. But, uh, well, look, right, there's a good shot right there. Let me just look at that. You can see that. Here they're all up on top. You can see the little ones from last August, so they're almost a year old there. And then you got the three-year-olds, the big ones. They're at least three. Uh, it looks like they got food floating over there. So anyway, anyway, come on. There we go. I gotta think of the names I have for these. Let me unplug this for a minute. I'm gonna unplug this a, a minute. I'll try plugging it in later, see if it works, but I don't understand why Stream Deck does not sometimes work and function. I don't know what I need to do to change it. Just like this, it happens so often. I just now just don't care. Yay. Oh, I have to go click on it even though I should be able to set it and forget it. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Why would you want to do that? You've obviously done something between streams, and so we won't show you what you were showing last. 
So, um, okay. So, we finished Amos. We finished Hosea. We finished Second Kings. And we're going to start with the Romans. We're going to start with Romans. So, I'll get this all caught up here later so that you can see what we actually get done but here romans one would be where we start obviously but if we get through five today we'll still be behind <laughs> so whatever we get in romans is what we get in romans and we'll be in romans until i get this updated and figured out through the end of the month and uh and then we'll we'll pick up where we need to so hopefully end of the week we'll see how good we are and we'll go from there. So, I do have to say, though, as we go to Romans, of Paul's letters, okay, Paul writes to um, Ephesus, the Ephesians, Paul has been to Ephesus. Paul writes to Corinth, the Corinthians, he has been to Corinth. He writes to Thessalonica, the Thessalonians. He's been to Thessalonica. Now, Galatia, we debate about where he's writing to. We don't exactly know. But the presumption of, of part of it is he could have been, had visited Galatia. If it's South Galatia, if it's North Galatia, he, he possibly did not. Uh, but the presumption is he knows or knows them personally, has visited them. With the individual letters, Timothy, Titus, Philemon, he knows them, he's visited them. Uh, I don't fall into the group that thinks Paul wrote Hebrews, so that one we don't need to think about for a minute. So that leaves uh, Romans. Paul did not visit Rome before writing to the, to the church in Rome. He did not visit Rome and then decide to write to the church in Rome. He writes to the church in Rome hoping to visit them he knows a few individuals there uh, most definitely but the church itself he has not visited them he does not know them and he's writing to them the other thing we need to keep in mind paul is not writing a letter to people who do not know and have not heard about jesus he is writing to people who have heard so why would he be writing most likely to strengthen their faith. That's going to be the most likely thing that he's going to do. There will be additional things, but the scenario for which he is writing would be to encourage them in their faith, whether they are going through persecution now or have, or other things have happened, he's writing to protect, most likely to strengthen their faith. So hope that makes some sense to everybody as we go through, because I think that makes a difference of what we think the book is doing, why the book is doing certain things, if we know who he's writing to, when he's writing, and whether he's been there or not. Donnie Dreams, hey! Welcome in, good to see you. How are you doing? Unfortunately, I must admit, I wasn't in the Koi Pond all week, but I was in there quite a bit. Also, welcome in. Hey, if you pop by at all, if you pop by at all, that's awesome, friend. I appreciate it. I'm up to... 25 followers at least 25 followers i saw that at, i don't know if it was saturday or yesterday um that i had 25 followers in there so still hoping to get 50 i might i'll have to see what's up with um blessing boat but who knows who knows maybe i could do a uh stream with uh the other channel one dapper one dapper koi pond for um blessing boat i'd have to add something else to it besides here's just fish for an hour but uh that would be all right da, 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 da. come on so anyone who's not following there it is you can go follow if you'd like i'd appreciate it. if you want to just watch my fish more often if I'm not live over the weekends or I'm on vacation, I'm dropping the stream live. Probably not during the week so much, unless I do a sunset stream, which I might do. You never know. 
Okay. Bum, bum, bum. Romance. Okay. The other thing we have, which sounds weird, is the way they start. From Paul. Okay. We usually have to so-and-so. That's not how they used to write letters. They would first tell you who it was from. The person delivering it needed to know who it was to. So the delivery person had the, uh, the knowledge of who it was to. Uh, letters might, uh, might be sealed. They might not. Um, depending upon the importance of it and the person delivering it and, and making sure that nobody else saw it. But they would know who it was to. And you would start out by saying who it was from. So the first thing you want to know in a letter is who is it from. From Paul, a slave of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God. Okay. We don't need any of that. Called apostle. Uh, the genitive of the phrase, gospel of God, could be translated as subjective genitive, the gospel which God brings, or objective, the gospel about. Either is grammatically possible. Okay, and I don't see a distinction between those. Okay. You could just leave it as of God. That's, that's fine, too. Okay, so Paul is saying who he is. He is giving his status in relationship to Jesus. He is giving his status in relationship to the church, the apostle. So slave in relationship to Jesus, follower, servant, one who does whatever Jesus is instructing him. The apostle, the leadership position set apart is what apostle is. And what is he set apart for? For the gospel. That's interesting. An apostle set apart. Let me go look at the... the Greek here because that seems like set apart means apostle. So is there a wordplay on apostle, ap apostolos? Uh, separated unto the gospel. Okay, a doulos. Well, there. Oh, there's some fun. Palas doulos. Some wordplay there. Palas doulos. Of Jesus Christos, called Kletos, Apostolos, Aparizo, unto the gospel. Okay, separated. Okay, so set apart being different than separated there. Okay. So, for instance, if you, you buy the packet of the mixed veggies and you separate out all the ones you like or you don't like. You just separate them out. So he is a, a called one, but he's also separated from the rest of the called ones. Okay, that makes sense. And thanks, Lucis, for being right on top of the words. Ba -da -ba. Hey, Mom Boss Lady, welcome in. This gospel he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures concerning his son, who was a descendant of David, which reference with reference to the flesh, who was appointed the Son of God in power, according to the Holy Spirit, by the resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him we have received grace and our apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith among all the Gentiles on behalf of his name. Wow, that's a statement. Okay. I hope you're tracking with all that. So he's 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 like setting up his whole uh, book here, his whole uh, treaty that he's writing. Through him we receive grace and our apostleship to bring about obedience of faith among all the Gentiles, and or on behalf of his name. You are you also are among them called to belong to Christ Jesus, to all those who loved. Oh, sorry. To all those loved by God in Rome, called to be saints, grace and peace to you, and God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So that's his greeting to everybody. Playing the anointed, David saves Kelly. Kelly? Kelly? Not sure of that game. 
Artsy Bible Nerd. How we doing, friend? How we doing? So he greets everyone. He tells them who he is. He has a, 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 a salutation in reference to the gospel, in reference to Jesus. Those are important things. I know it's like, okay, but what do we do with them? It doesn't matter. He's acknowledging his position in relationship to the gospel and their position in relationship to the gospel as well. First of all, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you because your faith is proclaimed through the whole world. Okay, I like this statement. It's a fascinating statement. Kila? Okay. Kila. Thanks, Mom Boss Lady. Hope the game is uh, one you're enjoying if you're playing it. Because um, I know people play games that they're stream picks that they don't enjoy, like Subnautica. <laughs> okay, so this is really, really a cool thing. I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you because your faith is proclaimed through the whole world. He is saying the church in Rome's faith is proclaimed throughout the whole world. How is that being understood? It's not being understood the whole world, meaning South America, Australia, and Antarctica. It's not, okay? It's the whole Roman Empire. <laughs> yeah, Donnie, I actually enjoyed Subnautica. <laughs> no, I was thinking of someone in particular who does not enjoy Subnautica, but allows his stream to uh, force him to play Subnautica. So, uh, so this isn't a proclamation global through the whole world. The whole world is an expression meaning the empire, the known world, all of that. So, the faith of the Christians in Rome is becoming so well known that Paul is hearing about it. So, that's why, I mean, that's just awesome. Would he be a pastor by any chance? He rhymes with... <laughs> I'm not going to read that, uh, artsy Bible nerd. That sounds like it's going to come off my tongue uh, pretty pretty poorly. But yes, that would be who I was talking about. Because uh, some people do that. You know, like, hey, stream, pick something I'm going to hate, and then you'll watch me suffer. And... Um, uh, yeah, let's let's not do that. All right, I'm gonna plug my uh, stream deck in and see if it's gonna work now that it's sat here for quite some time. Still not gonna work today. I don't know why it does that every once in a while. It just does not work. <laughs> I feel bad. I missed Miss Maria's stream this morning. Oh, Mom, best lady. We we all miss things occasionally and regularly. So don't don't feel bad. Just enjoy when you're there. I, I barely made any of it myself. Um, so I didn't say hi till like the last 10 minutes. Okay. So just imagine this. And we have this happen occasionally where worldwide we get to... Now, it's more often now than it would have been then. But worldwide, you get to hear about people who have done something somewhere else around the world. And it's getting proclaimed that it's being spread. Now... I don't think Paul has in mind going TikTok uh, viral or anything like that. No, it's the deeds that you're doing, the things that you're teaching, the love that you are having for other people. So, uh, like if somebody needs rescued or something like that were happening, that might be what we would have today. Uh, some people that might get martyred, uh, we might have something like that that would be spread today. So, whatever they are doing... To proclaim God's love, to love their neighbors, Paul's hearing about their faith. And I don't think it's just intellectual knowledge. Their faith is what they practice. Okay, if you're not practicing it, it's not your faith. For God whom I serve in my spirit in the gospel of his son is my witness that I continually remember you. And I always ask in my prayers, if, bum, 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 if perhaps now at last I may succeed in visiting you according to the will of God. For I long to see you so that I might impart to you some spiritual gift to strengthen you. Okay, this is why he wants to visit 
is to impart with them a spiritual grift to strengthen them. He may want to do other things in the letter, but specifically his visit would be for the purposes to impart a spiritual gift to strengthen them. The guy she raided showed what's wrong with an unending subathon. Unfortunately, didn't have a mod to change the game to I'm only sleeping. Ah. Usually awake by 15 and woke up at 14.30 so, or so later. But I'm guessing your body finally decided to sleep. Yeah. Um, I got back from vacation. So I don't know what, what, what you're like on vacation. I wake up early a lot on vacation, like earlier than normal. So I went to central time zone. So then I'm normally up at 6.30. And so that would be 5.30 Central Time Zone. And I was waking up at 4.30 and 5 Central Time Zone and trying to lay there and sleep for several more hours before getting up on most days. Now that I'm back home and I'm not on vacation, I had to have my alarm wake me up today. Oh no, the guy fell asleep in his chair. Oh, so he wasn't... Laying down sleeping. He was full on fell asleep while streaming. Oh no. Yeah, maybe he was playing and fell asleep, but he was. Oh. Well, I hope to never make that mistake, Donnie. Woo. I, I would feel full on embarrassed by that. People watching me sleep. Um, I will be no, doing no intentional sleeping streams, that's for sure. Uh, I, I do weird things in my sleep. Okay, so Paul is longing to visit this church. He's heard about their faith. He wants to go there. He wants to give them some kind of spiritual gift of strength. That is that we may be mutually comforted by one another's faith. Okay, isn't that a beautiful thought? My faith is supposed to mutually comfort you. So when you don't have faith, that something can happen, but your fellow Christian next to you has faith. You, their faith should give you comfort in the midst of where you're struggling with your faith. That's why we gather with two or three together, so that we mutually encourage one another, both yours and mine. See, he wants his encouraged by the other person's faith too. Paul can't just do it alone. He can't just stand in his own faith and act in his own faith and remain in his own faith. He needs others around him too. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that I often intend to come to you and was prevented until now so that I may have some fruit even among you just as I already have among the rest of the Gentiles. I am a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the foolish. Thus I am eager also to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome. So he's like, he's making sure, I'm not making any distinction, okay? I'll go to the Greeks, I'll go to the barbarians, okay? I'll go to the wise, I'll go to the foolish. And so I'm not intentionally... Maybe people are spreading rumors saying Paul doesn't want to come here. Paul doesn't love us. Paul doesn't like us. We're not good enough for Paul. He's just going out to those weirdos out in the, the hinterlands. And Paul's making it clear. I've wanted to come to you. I've been prevented from coming to you. And I hope finally to be able to come to you. <laughs> what vacation, Mom says. The only vacation I can afford is to take one step out the front, one foot, turn around and come right back in. <laughs> um, well, a go for a walk around the block, you know, could still be a nice vacation. Vacation really is just going somewhere and doing something you don't normally do. That's all I think a vacation is. The intent of enjoyment or relaxation. Doing something you don't normally do. Now, we usually think a vacation means you're not working. So, for me, that mostly means not streaming. So, my wife, that means not working. Okay. I don't like that we separate this out. I, I really don't at times. Like, 
He's just said, I'm eager also to preach the gospel to you in Rome. This, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. We, we know this passage. We pull this passage out. We, we wave this passage around in front of people. Uh, I'm not ashamed of the gospel for it is God's power for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jews first and also the Greeks. For the righteous and or righteousness of God is revealed in the gospel from faith to faith, just as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. Okay, I'm going to unpack that in a second. Uh, uh, Mom, boss lady, because we want to go somewhere thinking at the time it's where God wants us, but God has other plans for us. Oh, true. Yeah, Paul wants to go. He thinks he should go. God has other plans. Yep. Hey, I'm watching you people. Welcome in. But what I was getting at here is, Paul is making the, the, this plea here. I am a debtor both to the Greeks, the barbarians, the wise, and the foolish. I am this. Therefore, I am eager to preach the gospel to you in Rome. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power for everyone who believes, the Jews first, then the Greeks. The righteousness of God is revealed in the gospel from faith to faith. So I'm not stop, c preventing myself from coming to Rome because I am scared to preach the gospel in Rome. That's what this passage, I think, is saying. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'll come to Rome. I'll preach it in Rome. I'll preach it anywhere. Will I preach it here or there? I will preach it anywhere. I will preach it in a car. I will preach it at a bar. I will preach the gospel, as they say. I will preach Christ every single day. If he were Dr. Seuss, that's what he might say. So, that, see, we take this, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. And we usually use it to go towards someone who is either in fear of sharing the gospel with friends who might make fun of them. Or we go the other extreme, go into a foreign country and be in a missionary. And Paul is talking about this coming to the church in Rome that may be suffering persecution, it may not, and speaking the gospel to those who already believe, and then expanding from there. He's like, I'm not ashamed to come and share it with you. Like, mine is different than everybody else's. No, I, I am totally been trying to do this. Let me see if there's something in this phrase. By faith, for faith, or by faith, to faith. Yeah, this is a from faith to faith or by faith for faith. Um, it is simple language that could convey several different things. I think the point of it being that the gospel spreads from one believer to another believer. I think I think that's what that's meaning. Faith comes from hearing and faith by the word of God. He says that elsewhere. And how can they hear without someone saying it? They'll say that later on. So I think that's a fleshing out of this idea of my faith comes. I share my faith. You hear of my faith. You learn of the faith that I have. We participate in that together. We, we build each other up. And the righteous will live by faith. And Uncle Teddy... Eight months of, welcome in, good to have you, friend. Love it, love it, thank you, friend. Mom, boss lady, oh, believe me, I'll talk about my God, Christ, to anyone who's willing to listen at doctor's appointments in supermarkets, online, on phone. I don't feel I should go anywhere special. Okay, I had to clip that. <laughs> awesome, awesome, Donnie. Yeah, thanks for the clip, man. Uh... My stream deck is not functioning today, and I think the last I was, like, Clippy wasn't working well anyway. So thanks. I appreciate any clips. I will share that um, in whatever the uh, story is. I think that's what it's called. Okay, the righteous will live by faith. So he's leading up to, like, I'm going to be living out the righteous will live by faith. I'm going to live by faith. That's what I am doing. I am demonstrating it, so... That clip is going to live rent-free in my head. Thank you. <laughs> okay. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of people. I will preach the gospel. <laughs> Thank you, Donnie. 
Okay. Um, I think this is also goes in a uh, direction as well. Oh, back to lurking. Okay. You're listening at work. Hey, appreciate you, friend. Hope you have a blessed day. Okay. So Paul is making his case as to why he wants to come to Rome still. Why he has a desire to. What has prevented him from getting there. I think he's still in that. Like, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. He's talking about himself. He's talking about the faith in general. Now he's going to start making an appeal. But again, remember, he is talking to Christians who are in the church in Rome. This is not a letter to Caesar. This is not a letter to the Roman Senate of people who are non-believers. These are people who have heard of Jesus, who have decided to explore Jesus, who are in the church of Jesus Christ in Rome because they've heard the message and they are seeking to live it out and follow it. Now, they might be stumbling along the way. They might be messing up along the way, but they are seeking to follow Jesus. So this is not outsiders who've not heard. So I know we have this idea called the Romans Road, and here's the things you need to know and believe in all of that. And there may be truth in that. I'm not downplaying it. But we've taken Romans, and we've given Romans as a here's how to convince someone who's never heard of Jesus how to be a follower of Jesus. And that's not what it is. It's people who have already committed, I want to follow Jesus, how to live out following Jesus, which I think is drastically different. Okay. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of people who suppress the truth by their unrighteousness. Because what can be known about God is plain to them, because God has made it plain to them. For since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen because they are understood through what he has made." Okay, Paul's appeal here is that there are clear attributes of God seen in creation. People have have no excuse about knowing and understanding God because of creation. This is what we often call general revelation. I can see a sunrise and a sunset, and I know that there's a creator of the universe. I can see uh, the beauty of uh, animals and trees, and flowers, and understand there's a creator of it, okay? So that only gets you so far. That only gets you so far in understanding who did it and who it was that did it. But he's he's talking about whether you have knowledge that points to there must be a creator or not. And I think that's because he's just talking about what's been revealed, what's been in his invisible attributes, uh, the fact that rain does fall on you and your your evil neighbor, because uh, you obviously be the good one. You and your evil neighbor both get rain. You and your evil neighbor both get blessed by the rains and the crops and the produce and all of that. So it's all good. God God does that. The attributes of God are loving. You can discern that by things you see. Uh, I'm watching. That reminds me of people who say they know God and appreciate them because they see him in nature. They don't go to church. They just sit in nature and contemplate God. It's a lot bigger than that. Yes. Yeah. Um, I think you can commune with God in the sense of appreciation and awe and beauty and wonder and talk to him in the beauty of his creation. Absolutely. 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 Um, But I don't think that's a substitute, and notice what I'm going to say. That is not a substitute for fellowship with other believers. Didn't say go to church. Okay, it's not a fellow, it's not a replacement for fellowship with other believers. You need other believers to connect with, to encourage your faith, and for you to encourage their faith. That can happen in a worship service on Sunday. It doesn't always happen in a worship service on Sunday. That might happen in a Sunday school class. It doesn't always happen in a Sunday school class. You can go attend all those things and have none of that happen. I think the point of the body of believers is to encourage one another, to lift up one another, to carry one another's burdens. So if that's not happening, you're not in a church. Yes, exactly. You need to sharpen that iron. 
Um, being kind of silly. Um, I don't see the beauty in snakes. <laughs> well, if you lived on an island filled with rats or mice or some other rodent, maybe a little beauty in snakes could be seen. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get, and so, so some people might have an appreciation for snakes. I'll just go down this rabbit trail for a second here. Uh, but I, I can't find any beauty in mosquitoes. Any beauty in mosquitoes. Just, where is the beauty in mosquitoes? What, what, what is beautiful about something that sucks blood and flies away? I don't get it. You know, you prefer the rats over the snakes? Okay. Uh, I'm watching. I feel more connected with the digital church I'm a part of than the church that I've been a uh, follower for over 10 years now. Yeah, and I don't, I don't, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm saying you connect wherever you're able to, and you connect to the deeper levels when you can. And we should all be striving for that. And I think, and I, I'm just as guilty of this, that the physical church got caught up in numbers and butts and pews, and we call it sometimes nickels and noses, and that was our focus, and we just needed more people in, and as long as you say you follow Jesus, get in here, and be in here, and be there, and we can count you, and we, we, we weren't in relationship with half of those people. That's why they haven't come back after COVID. You see the beauty in every living animal? Uh, I think we should. I think we should strive to. I think we should strive to. I find more beauty in fish uh than a lot of other animals but uh that's me that's me okay so it's clearly made in what god has made so the invisible attributes so i wanted to make that connection too not just that god is eternal power and divine no his invisible attributes what would be the invisible attributes of, of god that he is love god is love I think that's an invisible attribute. God is slow and patient, slow to anger, abounding in mercy. Those are invisible attributes. They are only seen over the course of time in relationship with him. That is the only way to establish those, is over the course of time to be able to see and understand those. So people are without excuse. Well, they're without excuse, okay, um, I'll give you an example. So, uh, man, I wish I knew what the sign, remember what the sign was. We were, I was just in Mexico and there was a street sign on the side of the road. Didn't have words on it. Um, but it was a picture and I've never seen that picture before. I don't know what it was telling me I could not do while driving. I wasn't driving, so it was okay. I wasn't doing whatever it was, but it was a picture I had never seen. It was a sign telling me something that was probably prohibited from doing and I had no knowledge of what it meant. But if I were violating it, I would be without excuse. Why? Because the sign was clearly posted on the road telling me not to do that. It was clear instructions of what to do or what not to do, whichever way it went. It was clear instructions from the person that put the sign up. However, I don't know what the instructions were. I didn't understand it, but I knew there were instructions. That part I could understand. So from that standpoint, it doesn't mean that full understanding is taking place, but full knowledge that there has been something posted, there has been something given, and that we should be learning and responding. Now, had I been driving, I could have said to the fellow people in the car, what is it? I could have Google searched what it is. I could have asked people who were local to explain it to me. So once I see the thing pointing to something, it's on me to go investigate it. I think that's what we see in here. So the people who were Gentiles were supposed to see things pointing to God, see the people of God, go to the people of God, and inquire of the people of God about God. There's where you have no excuse. You saw something, you needed to then take it upon yourself to go and find out more that you were missing. So... Um, I'll get to your comment in just a second. For although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God or give him thanks. But they became futile in their thoughts, and their senseless hearts were darkened. So they, 
They knew they should do something. They didn't go do it. They went instead and did other things. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for an image resembling mortal human beings or birds or four-footed animals or reptiles. Okay, I'm going to come back to that thought in a second. Okay, so they should have seen the beauty of God, explored who this God was. Instead, they did not. They went and did something else. They went and became futile in darkness in their own thoughts. They didn't turn to God. They didn't look for God. They made up senseless things, and they started exchanging the creation for the creator. So rather than the immortal God, they start worshiping other things. Okay, by the way, pay attention to this list order. They, they Human beings, birds, four-footed animals, reptiles. Okay, if you've ever studied the automobile industry, the first automobiles are named after the man who started the company. You have Ford, you have Oldsmobile. You have Chevrolet, you have Chrysler. Um, so they are naming their companies after themselves. And then you have the Ford Model T, uh, Model A. Um, they are the model of what Ford has created. Ford did it, Ford is the namer of it. Oh, then they name them after birds. You have the Thunderbird. You have the Firebird. You, you have the... Um, I'm trying to remember others. Eagle is out there. So, oh, and then you have four-footed animals. You have the Impala. You, ha you have the Cougar. You have the Jaguar. Oh, and then you name them after reptiles. There's the Viper. Okay? There's a progression of the naming of automobiles that follows this exact order uh, within certain companies. You could follow along. You have birds and then four-footed animals and then reptiles when you get to the end. And I know there's other things in those lists as well with weird names and such. But anyway, I always find that funny that automobiles follow that pattern of naming after people, then naming after birds, then animals, and then reptiles. Okay. Um, Mom, boss lady, I haven't been to church in a few weeks, and I miss it. And physical churches are more concerned about entertainment than, it, than in getting the God's word without sugarcoating it and what people want to hear. Um, that, that may or may not be true for all churches. I think that there is a level at which excellence sometimes is a substitute for things. They're trying to do it excellently and it comes across as entertainment and they're using it to attract people. So it has to be entertaining. Um, but I, I totally understand what you're saying. Totally understand. Uh, gonna send me something on Discord, Donnie. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Not all churches. Yep. But it, it's it's one of the things you get caught up in. It's what do you start measuring? What do you start? So, if uh, yeah, true. Not all churches. Yeah. Um, but the other thing is is when we get into the copycat someone else because what they're doing works without knowing and understanding why, okay? So, this is a really easy thing to do on Twitch, right? You watch a Twitch streamer. You see what the Twitch streamer does. Then you go look at the Twitch streamer's counts and you go, wow, their viewer count is higher than mine. Their sub count is higher than mine. Their follower count is higher than mine. I'll just copy what they're doing and my counts will all go up doesn't work that way doesn't work that way you don't know why they're doing what they're doing you don't know the, the the skills that they are using to carry out all the things that they're doing you don't know all the systems and stuff that they set up to get there you don't know how the journey went for them to take it from i'm just going to go with this two viewers to 200 viewers. I mean, that's a whole journey that they had to go on. You don't know where the critical steps along the way were on that journey. You just go, I'll copy what they're doing and that'll make me successful the same way. We've done that with churches. We look at a church that is, oh wow, that church has 500 people. We have 100 people. Let's do what they're doing. We'll end up being 500 people. Well, frankly, 
I mean, I have thousands of people in my uh, Facebook because that's my oldest social media. I don't know half of the people in there. Uh, or I no longer have a relationship with the people in there. I'm no longer serving at a church where I was connected with them. So the fact that they're there doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean anything. I have more relationship with people who are on my Twitch stream than I do on my Facebook. I have fewer people in my Twitch stream than I do in my Facebook feed. Which do I spend more time on? My Twitch stream. Where I can spend time with you. Getting to know you. Knowing what's on, going on in your life and spending time in God's Word. So, uh, just saying. We, we can do that in any area. We can do that in any area. And we, we often do. We, we, we think that just copying is going to get the results we want. Instead of spending the time to learn and grow and become what we're supposed to be. Yeah, oh, also the audience, yeah. <laughs> it got, got, yeah, what are you chasing exactly, subs? Yep. <clears throat> uh, I choose to chase after God and what he wants me to do. That is the best way. If you can, it, when you know what that is. And when you don't, yes, the chasing after God. And when you know what it is, chasing after what you're to do, yes. Me too. I try to do my best to do what God wants me to do. And I think that's what we're supposed to do. Yeah, a streamer has to figure out what they want to do with their stream. Yeah. And and it's also, like, there is great freedom to choose and do something differently from time to time. Like, I think I'd been talking about wanting to start a whole separate channel um, for my fish for two years. I mean, Pastor Deustin's had his fish tank cam up, I want to say, at least a year, year and a half. I was talking about doing that before Deustin was doing it full-time. He would do it once in a while, uh, but before he had his whole channel up, I was talking about it. I just have, don't have the tech to do it, and I finally decided I'm just going to do it without the tech. I'll just do it when I'm not on. So that's where I finally got it going. Now i got to start over doing what it, what it's going to be and uh, and all of that and then deciding how often do i leave it 24 7 is that beneficial for people to find me or not is it great in the middle of the night probably not can i change that yeah it'll get better i'll experiment with things and figure some things out uh donnie yeah sometimes i feel like that i'm closer to people i've met online than people in my church yeah i definitely feel that way um, I'm watching. I could care less about big stream. So just barely keep up to seven folks. I felt that. Oh my god. Yeah, hundred chatters. I I don't think that's it. I, what I do would not be beneficial to a hundred chatters. Yeah. Yeah, you love the koi, however it's spelled. Yes, spell it however you care. I don't care. I spell I spell it with a K. I also spell gray with an E. I like to be pretentious once in a while. Ho, ho, ho. I dare you spell gray with an A? Oh, preposterous. Preposterous. Actually, funny story behind that. As a kid, I would look for the crayons when there was gray that was spelled with an E, and I did not want to use gray spelled with an A. I have no idea why that is. I have no idea why that is. Oh, but are you on the right side with the gray? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just amusing myself. This is what you get on vacation brain, you know, coming back. Okay. Uh, you've been in a stream of 1,000 plus, and unless it's music, you can't read the chat. Too yeah, yeah. You have to have it on slow. You, it's, yeah. And, oh, welcome in, Wade Mock. If I have not said so today. Um, I'm watching. I get generally nervous what I get a pretty big raid. Heck, I'll even raid, oh, even raids of four people can make me addled for a bit. Yeah. Could be a European spelling. I think there probably is a difference there. But gray might be one of those words in, in the America that did not get settled out on how to spell it. And so they both exist. It's one of the few words where we permit and allow multiple spellings of a word. 
And we don't, you know. Yeah. Oh, raids of four people. Okay. <laughs> raids of poor people. I wasn't sure what you meant by poor. Um, but that's... Yes. Raids of poor people. They scare me. I get addled when those poor people come in. Because they, they can't afford, you know, computers and such. I'm just teasing you. I... That makes a whole lot more sense. Raids of four people. Four and four. <laughs> Mom, I like to be different. Thinking, hey, maybe if I share God in a different way, that might catch someone's eye and, uh, and them and say, hey, what's this Jesus you're talking about? Sounds cool. Exactly. Exactly. Um, this is why I'm trying to point out, what I'm trying to point out here, Rome, the letter to Rome, the letter of Romans is written to people who already have heard, who already believe, who are all trying to seek after following Jesus. So this is a letter to the church. This is not a letter to the world. This is not a letter to the Roman Empire. This is a letter to the people of God. So, But he's explaining about those outside. And what have they done? They have served and followed and elevated creation over creator. Um, I'm going to go ahead and snooze that ad here. So we've got at least 10 minutes, I think, to finish this chapter. Therefore, God gave them over into the desires of their hearts to impurity, to dishonor their bodies among themselves. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worshiped and served the creation rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Yeah, so here's his point, and I was leaning towards it. This point is, when you chase after something that is not God, God lets you get that. He lets you get that and find out it's not satisfying, it's not fulfilling. You get exactly what you're going after. We can look at this example of um, Pharaoh, where Pharaoh wants to harden his heart. He wants to turn against God, so God allows him to. And then God hardens Pharaoh's heart. And then Pharaoh hardens his heart. And so God just keeps giving him. It's like... The, we've talked about it a few times. You have blessing and curse. Choose what you want to want today, today, who you will serve. Well, when you choose, you're going to serve not God, and curse is the result. It's, in some ways, it's the absence of blessing. It's the natural results of. So we can look at this as giving them over to is, like, for instance, if you had a child, and it was Halloween, and you told them they should eat just two pieces of candy, not eat the whole whole pumpkin full and they're like but i want them all i want them all and you've done this year after year after year you finally when they're a little older you you're, you know they're they're finally 10 years old and then you're just like fine eat all of it and then they get sick and then you say see i told you so you give them over to the desire that they want so that they can learn the desire they want was not good that's what i see that's happening here god is letting people pursue the thing they want even though it's not good, so that they can truly understand it's not good. It doesn't satisfy. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you get it clipped that. Where um, God, people wanted a, yes, and, and not a prophet. Yeah, exactly. There's another good example of the giving of the king that they wanted, and then he's going to take all of this from you and all of this. And it's like, yes, but we want it. Ha, uh, me eat two pieces of candy? Doesn't happen. Yes, laughing at Sal. Exactly. Yeah, like where? Exactly. Yep, yeah, I understand what you meant. Where God did that in the past. Yes, great examples. You're tracking with me. Okay. Now he's going to continue. So it's the serving creator or creation rather than serving creator. That's what they're doing. And so in their pursuit of serving creation... They are doing things that are not seeking and following after God. Okay. For this reason, God gave them over to dishonorable passions. Um, okay. I want to go look up that word passions for a minute. I want to go look up that word passion. So I'm trying to remember if that has a connotation of um, food, um, war, or sex. I'm not sure which one it has. 
vile affections is what it says. Ooh. Vile affections. Pathos. Oh. Okay. Atomia. At Atomia. Atomia. Dishonor. Ignominy. Disgrace. Okay. Pathos. Okay, whatever befalls one, whether it be sad or joyous, uh, calamity, mishap, evil, affliction, a feeling which the mind suffers, an affliction of the mind, emotion, passion, passionate deeds, uh, used by the Greeks in either good or a bad sense. In the New Testament, bad sense, depravity, passion, violence. Yeah, see, that's what I thought. It does, like... Inordinate uh, affection, affection, lust. So, pathos. Like, if we talk about um, crime of passion, that's kind of the thing. Like, it's in the moment. It's the feeling. It's you're going with the feeling towards whatever it is. You're seeking after that feeling, I think, is, is the way to understand that. So, it is a dishonorable desire. Oh, for the woman exchanged the natural sexual relations for unnatural ones. And likewise, the men also abandoned their natural relations with women and were inflamed in their passion for one another. Men committed shameless acts with men and received in them the due penalty for their error. Okay, uh, if we look at how um, cult practices happen, there are... Um, Sexual relations that happen in the worship of gods. I think that's part of the idea of unnatural. You are doing this in the worship of deities. You are doing this in the practice of. You are celebrating an, an act that does not have to do with being in relationship with the person. Um, it has to do with worship. And then, so you've got that among cult prostitutes, both men and female prostitutes. And you're doing these for other acts. And he's lumping those all together in some way. You can remember growing up, my mom would say, I hit your dad with a purple passion. Never understood that saying. I'm, I'm not sure what word you're covering. H letter, T letter. Oh, sorry. sorry. Okay, hey, sorry. I, I like My brain couldn't get the, the, the vowel on the end there. I'm going hot. Hate, okay. I hate your dad with a purple passion. Never understood that saying. Huh. I don't know that I've heard that one before, but I'm 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 think purple is usually not um Yeah, not um a color it's usually a color of passion, of love. So saying hate with purple is probably She's probably being sarcastic on some level or dispassionate of, of saying the opposite to mean the same thing would be my thought of. I hate him with a purple passion. Like, there's all love. There is no hate. I'm guessing that's what that is. I don't know. I'll, I'll, uh, well, we can talk about the Olympic thing after the break. Um, let me just fi see if I can finish this chapter. And just as they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them over to a depraved mind to do what should not be done. Okay, so... <clears throat> you're going to do the things that shouldn't be done because you are following after the things that are not God. They are filled with every kind of unrighteousness, wickedness, covetousness, malice. They are rife with envy, murder, strife, deceit, hostility. They are gossips, slanders, haters of God, insolent, arrogant, boastful, contrivers of all sorts of evil, disobedient to parents, senseless, covenant breakers, heartless, ruthless, although they fully know God's righteous decree that those who practice such things deserve to die, they not only do them, but they also approve of those who practice them. Okay, this is quite the list. Let me just see. How many do we have? Okay, every kind of unrighteousness, wickedness, covetousness, malice... 
rife with evil, murder, strife, deceit, hostility. So there was a group of four, there's a group of five. Gossip, slanders, haters of God, insolent, arrogant, boastful, contrivers of all sorts of evil. Could be seven, uh, we can keep going. Disobedience to parents, senseless covenant breakers, heartless, ruthless. I don't know if I missed, I might have missed the heartless, ruthless. So it might be 12 there. So you got four, five, seven, 12. You got all these numbers going on. Like Paul is trying to explain everything going on in the world around as opposed to God. Listing all the things. They're all these things. Notice what didn't get listed in these. Here's what they are. Is not the sexual immorality. Is not in that list. They're filled with every kind of unrighteous. That's not in the list. Gossip. Deceit, hostility, murder, strife, boasting, arrogant, insolent, disobedient to parents, senseless covenant breakers. So we're heading into an ad uh, here shortly. So uh, we'll just let that happen and then come back. So will you work today? No, you're not. So I got to get over here. Bum, 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 bum. Back to pine. Flat cap pastor ox is tweet Streaming life by the reeds Fish pond calm and glassy clear View it all right from here Hey, thank you for the follow! Dapper man with Saxon hair Johnny VTuber! Chris Deo! Hey, welcome in, friend! Welcome in! Let's, I'm gonna give you the baby koi and I'm gonna go feed the baby koi. Serenades the fish with ease Watch the fish, they swim along To the rhythm of his song Flat cat pastor shows the way Stream it live, come what may With his cam, he shows it all Little fish, both big and small Life in ponds so serene Nature's beauty on a screen See the ripples watch the oh, flow why'd you not why'd you pause the music gentle glow flat caps charm and calming tone makes the fish feel right at home No watch the fish come back I gotta feed along. you and then so I can show to you and you froze you song. froze Flat cat pastor Hey, not in the cage, way. welcome in. Stream it live, come what may. Okay, apparently that cam is messing up today. Okay. Let me get to this. Okay, we can go look the word up real quick, but I'd take me a minute to do it. So the, the whole, like, going through the Ten Commandments where it talks about covetousness, uh, it's an action word. It's not just the thought of it. It is, I have already put and set plans in motions to make something come about. So I know we think of covetousness of just being the thought inside. Jesus takes us that way further when he takes the idea of of. You've looked at a woman, you've already lusted after her. He takes and goes a step further with that from what the Old Testament was saying. So the Old Testament, the idea of coveting, envy, is I'm going to take some action based on that feeling. So I think the feeling is different. Like, oh man, I, I mean, I'll tell you what, I wish I could play an instrument. That wishing to play an instrument causes me to appreciate people that can't. That's where it goes. It goes to me appreciating people who can. Since we were just talking a little Olympics here, let's go in a different direction. <clears throat> Some of you might be old enough to remember uh, Nancy Kerrigan and Tanya Harding. Um, one of them had a, such a desire to be better than the other person and an envy of and covetousness of the other person that, and, and depending on how you see the story, there was, you know, uh, an attack that took place so that the one could excel from the other, whether that is the guy, you know, who was with her, 
who uh, did the, the deed on his own because of his envy, or if it was a joint thing together because of her envy, that's when you have envy has given way to, and, and Paul talks about this too, when the deed dwells in your mind and it takes root and then it becomes a seed that grows into a plan so that you can carry things out. It's on that way of living it out that really is what covetousness and envy has the idea of becoming. Not, oh, man, I wish I could be like that. I don't think there's anything wrong with, with having that appreciation for someone else and saying, I love that so much, I wish I could do that too. Um, so, hope that makes some sense there. Yeah, the smack down by the ice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're dating ourselves. I knew I knew it would, but we were just talking Olympics. So, <clears throat> I have not seen the thing. I only started seeing people post about what happened. So, um, I don't know the actual intent of, of what the opening ceremonies was trying to portray. Uh, yeah. Is it, is it not on me? I thought it was on me. So, oh, you're welcome, Mom Boss Lady. I think it's the actions that when I, like, for instance, envy can go to gossip. I, I mean, I don't have to do the physical action, but... I'm envious of someone, so I can start spreading rumors and talking about someone, like either, oh, did you notice they, like, I'll just pick on someone who's singing up in, in, in front of church. Oh, so-and-so was so pitchy today. Did you hear how pitchy they were? I couldn't believe how pitchy they were, and they're still on the praise team. I don't understand how they get to be on the praise team when they're so pitchy all the time. Really? I mean, shouldn't, shouldn't we have people who are better than that? I mean, you, you, like, there went the envy into something not good. Now, it's not the same extreme, but you can do it with your words. You can do it with your words to attack people, too. Um, so, anyway, I was going to say, whatever the opening ceremony was supposed to be, I'm not sure. I haven't investigated it. Um, but I've heard some saying that clearly it was the um, painting of the Last Supper. Others said it was supposed to be the Greeks and the whole Olympic origin of the gods and all of that on Mount Olympus and, and whoever the, the people were supposed to be. I don't know. I haven't seen it. But from the standpoint... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's why I was doing that. Oh, we're, okay. Let me know which it is and I'll finish this thought and then change hats. Um... Since what we were talking about here is the world doing what the world is going to do. We shouldn't be surprised when the world does what the world's going to do. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what the intent was. We shouldn't be shocked by it. I mean, why, why would we be outraged from people who haven't agreed to something, not living by what they haven't agreed to, or that they're celebrating something that we don't want to celebrate? Like, I'm not here to celebrate the Greek gods, okay? So if it was that, whoopity-doo. You wanted to celebrate the Greek gods because you're at the Olympics? I don't believe in the Greek gods. I don't follow the Greek gods. I'm not interested in them from that kind of a perspective of, uh, so you do you. I wish you didn't. I'd like to persuade you otherwise, but if that's what your intent was, okay. And if it was blasphemy, so what? So what? Love them. Love them anyway. But just on an aside, I've never understood the opening ceremonies, period. I've never understood a green one. Okay. I've never understood the opening ceremonies. Nobody wins a medal. I mean, I get the, let me run in with the torch, light the, the, light the flame. Got that. Everything else these are people who are not athletes, who are not competing, they're not getting a medal, and you're wasting my time. Because there's track and field that could be happening that you don't show. There's swimming that could be happening that you don't show. There's wrestling that could be happening that you don't show. Why? Because you took up somebody else's camera time, and you put on some people dancing, which isn't an Olympic sport, 
unless you're getting a medal and you didn't get a medal for the opening ceremonies so why would i waste my time watching opening ceremonies anyway oh bt dubs never watched a, 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 a halftime show uh at the super bowl either i didn't turn it on to watch halftime show unless it's a band and i know a person in the band i'm all over about the band but halftime show i don't know anybody that's on the halftime show i'm not watching it but anyway the whole overview of what their intent was and all of that and should we be outraged no we shouldn't be outraged we should love them we should love them no matter what their intent was we should love them whether it was good or bad we should love them okay now i'm going to get all the people jumping all over me for not wanting opening ceremonies okay um uh, i know like that uh finally got to the point telling her if i cannot stop complaining about others running your mouth i told her to leave me alone yeah y yeah you know one like that yeah They're the blind leading the blind. And, and that's very true. But what I'm getting at is our reaction shouldn't be outrage when we know that that's what's going to happen. I mean, I don't know if you ever had this happen, but um, when I was a kid, my we made mud pies. What were they made out of? Mud. Could you get other kids to eat the mud pie? Yes. Could you convince them it was real chocolate? Because once you made it into a mud pie, it was actually chocolate flavored and you could eat it? Yes. Could you get other kids to eat it? Yes. Were we deceiving one another? Yes. Was it fun? Yes. But we were kids and that's what we were doing. So it's not a lot different. Should parents be punishing and, and outraged at kids doing kid things? No. Should we as the world who follow after and seek after Jesus be outraged when the world does not christian things no we should expect it anticipate it and we should love them anyway uh i'm watching it donnie ironically when i envy people a bit for their charisma and charm and ease with other it's sort of projection in a way because people told me they see things those things all this time but i can't generally find them in myself so i think i envy those who have the sense of knowing if that makes sense. Oh, yeah, I know what you're saying. People here worship Nike all the time where I live. So many sports has replaced the Sunday church attendance where you live, Wade Mock. Yeah. And I, I would not disagree that people worship sports. People worship music. People worship all kinds of things. Yes. It's the pomp and ceremony, yeah. Which I don't, I don't know anyone there, and um, there's no medals. So I don't care about pomp and ceremony. Now, you want to have the parade of nations? All about the parade of nations. Fine with that. It's about the athletes who will be competing. You want to parade them around so that I can see who they are. Great. But a show that has nothing to do, where no medal and no athlete is competing, I don't care about at all. Oh, Hap, hey, welcome in. Um, how I saw your, your post, so praying, praying, praying. Um, not sure you didn't post what it is, but if it's an infection that, because um, I've, I've had other people in the hospital, not for the same condition, but in the hospital, get an infection in their foot and um, dealing with certain circumstances you're dealing with. That's where I was praying for, decisive, uh, soon response so that it doesn't, progress and progress and progress so so praying for your hap bum, ba, bum, 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 bum. you'll love the toast emotes <laughs> okay think we're caught up so i do think that whatever Whatever happens globally when Christians seem to get outraged is what Paul is talking about. I also think we shouldn't get outraged. We shouldn't get outraged when the world does things contrary to God. When the Romans were 
taking and throwing Christians to the lions, and they were doing whatever other practices and degrading and demeaning and, and all of that. Yeah, it should be grieving us, but we should not react and respond in outrage towards people. The only interest, you're only interested in the Special Olympics? That's cool. They don't get a much um, play on uh, TV. Uh, Hap, uh, he had triple bypass surgery three weeks ago, and has been in the hospital since. The initial thought was uh, he would lose his foot and some toes. Now they're wondering if he'll lose his leg up to the knee. Thanks for prayers. Yeah, absolutely. And when you said the toe and then the foot and then moving, that's why um, if they're talking an infection, which is an infection you usually get when you're in the hospital, um, MRSA, it's usually one you didn't go in the hospital with, but you get while in the hospital um, can be a problem. Hey, Pop Pop Taterhead, good morning, Flat Cap and Chat, been lurking and working, bring on the degradation of the world. There we go. Okay, so I do need to change my hat, and then we'll get back to, we'll get back to Romans. And I had thought about putting the green on today, because, because look at, look at that. Look at that. Green goes well with this one. The green goes well. Okay. Stream Deck not working, so I got to go look and go, what is the title of... Which Here, let me just show you this, by the way. I have pictures on there. So if I want my face, hey, look, there's a picture of my face. If I want the Bible, hey, look, there's a picture of the Bible. If I want fish, there's a picture of fish. So pretty easy to figure out what I'm going to show, whether it's a picture. I don't even look at the words, but then I got to go to the stream scene and go, what did I call that again? What did I call that? Okay. Okay. So Paul continues. Ah, oh, my my hats remind you so much of your dad. Happy memories. That's awesome. Um, the one over here, where is it? One right here is uh, my uh, my stepdad's hat. So I have one of those that yeah. When I when I want to feel nostalgic and uh, think about him, I'll wear that for a day. I don't wear that one often. But I know what you mean. Okay. Therefore, so in light of everything he's just said, in light of everything he's just said, you are without excuse. Whoever you are, when you judge someone else, for on whatever grounds you judge another, you condemn yourself because you who judge practice the same things. Oh, Oh, this is why we shouldn't have the chapter sections. Therefore, based on the fact that the world is against God, the world has been given over to the things it's doing, and you are condemning and judging them, you shouldn't do it because you do the same things. Why didn't we keep reading? Why did we stop there? Um, I had a bunch of or I saw a few posts yesterday with people talking about, uh, was your church outraged about the Olympic thing, and did your pastor talk about that on Sunday, or were you talking about something else, and why weren't you outraged about some other actual activities that are harming people around the world, like some genocide and other things? Why weren't those uh, of the level of bringing up to, to uh, the sermon? Um, because we want to judge others. And when you're doing that, you're condemning yourself. Now we know that God's judgment is in accordance with truth against those who practice such things. And do you think, whoever you are, when you judge those who practice such things, and yet you do them yourself, that you escape God's judgment? So you're going to judge them for the things they're doing, and you're going to escape judgment? Or, 
Do you have contempt for the wealth of his kindness, forbearance, and patience, and yet do not know that God's kindness leads to repentance? So you're like, well, God will be patient with me. Uh, God will forgive me, but I will not forgive them. They should be judged, and that's contempt for God's generosity, his love, his forbearance, his patience. And he's like, you want that? Don't you know? It's supposed to lead to repentance. Repentance is what you should be doing. Judgment of others is not what you should be doing. Continuing in things is not what you should be doing. Repentance. God's kindness is supposed to lead to repentance, not lead to you doing more things. Oh, yeah, there's, there's a saying when you point one finger at someone, there's three fingers pointing back at your own hand. Yeah, my mom used to say that all the time. Don't point. You know when you point, you're you're pointing three fingers back at yourself. And I said, I can do this then. Look at them. Look at them. It's them. It's. I wouldn't say that to my mom. I, I thought that. Uh, I would have got a woo. I would have got a whooping for saying something like that. Boom. You judge. You sink yourself into a hole. A uh, uh, hole. I'm gonna guess use. Uh, whole unless you ask for forgiveness yes sorry comma problem there yeah you judge you sink yourself into a hole unless you ask for forgiveness yeah you're out judging other people you should be seeking repentance repentance is to turn from what you are doing you're doing the same thing why do people oh, i this is this is a common thing that happens um so if um a person gets on one message and rails against the one thing all the time. It's usually the thing that they're guilty of. Notice this. Notice this. If somebody is railing all the time against something, then they are they are likely very guilty of something uh, in relationship to that. So, um, I'm just trying to think of... Oh, I'll just pick on this. If I talked about speeders and people violating and changing lanes and all of that all the time and how awful it is and all of that you, you, chances are I'm probably a horrible driver and i probably do the same things you do catch yourself mom boss lady judging certain people then i get that um excuse me young lady yep it's god getting my attention and i'll immediately ask for forgiveness i try not to judge um on purpose yeah and I do think that's a point here. This is intentional condemnation of others. So he sets it up. He sets them up. The world is this way. But you're not the judge of the world. The world is this way. God is the one who's merciful. So don't, don't just say, accept God's mercy for yourself and not accept God's mercy for the world. God is slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love, not wishing that any should perish. Not even those that participate in anything that's blasphemous. He does not wish that any should perish. So, he's slow to anger. He's the one who will judge. Yeah, don't be a Jonah. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> Jonah was wishing for their condemnation. He wanted them to get their comeuppance. He wanted to sit and watch the show. If God would have said to Jonah, Hey, go preach 40 days and uh, they'll be destroyed, and Jonah thought God was going to destroy them, he'd have been over there and been condemning them and going, Nanner, 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 you're going to get it, and I'm going to buy a seat up there, and I'm going to get my popcorn, and I'm going to watch. No, Jonah didn't want to go because he knew God did have abounding, steadfast love and mercy. So he didn't want to go do it. We, on the other hand, want to be like Jonah, we want to condemn, but we want the cond condemnation to happen now. Like, let's 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 get the uh, fire and brimstone and strike them dead in the moment thing. Because we saw that twice or three times in Scripture. Three, three, three times maybe. And so if it can happen in the moment, we want it to happen again. That'll show the world who God is. No, it won't. No, it won't. You loving people when they do outrageous things. That'll show That'll show the world. Maybe not all, but some. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, yeah, it's supposed to lead to repentance. But because of your stubbornness. Okay, again, this is to the church. This is not to the world. 
because of your stubbornness and your unrepentant hearts, you are storing up wrath for yourself in the day of wrath when God's righteous judgment is revealed. And he will reward each according to his works. This is a quotation. Okay, I thought it was going to show me the works here. Okay, let's go look that up. Uh, what verse? Six. Ergon. Ergon. Strong's G, 2041. Ergon. Ergon. Okay, so your work, your deed, you're doing your labor. In business, employment, uh, any product whatever, your act, your deed. So, the things you do. The things you do. Yeah, the brothers of thunder. Exactly, the brothers of thunder that were following Jesus. Yeah, let's call down thunder and lightning on them because they didn't do everything the way that we did. They were judgmental. Yeah. <clears throat> One day I'll be slow to anger. I'm getting there. Yeah. I hear myself yelling at myself, then stop and think, hey, it's just a game, or hey, it's okay, calm down. I say the same thing to others, it's okay, no sense in getting that upset on whatever is causing me or other people to get so upset. Yeah, and um, most often in my, my observation... The person you're upset with also is not the person in control of things and is not the cause of the problem. They are someone who is in between you and the cause of the problem. So, uh, I was supposed to fly out last Saturday at 6.30 a.m. Um, there was no crew for my plane. So, they delayed the flight. Then they delayed the flight. Then I could not get on another flight uh, and get to where I was going. So we go and we talk to the person to find out what they're doing. By the time we left the airport, four hours after my flight was supposed to leave, and by the way, they're two hours before the flight was supposed to start, take off. So at the airport for six hours... Uh, finally leave, my getting upset and yelling and screaming at anybody would have done nothing. In fact, me just going up and saying, hey, I understand this isn't your problem, but can you? is there any way you can help us? Can we, we, we're trying to get here. This is what we're trying to do. What options do we have? Uh, but this was the whole system. If you didn't see what was going on, it was the whole system. It was a Microsoft update, but it wasn't Microsoft. It was another company that does security for a whole bunch of things. Uh, my wife saw that, uh, I want to say, estimated $2 billion of lost money in healthcare because they use it too. Not They're not getting as much um, uh, news coverage as the airline industry. But like my their crew was not there. They couldn't fly the plane. The plane next to me, I don't know if they actually left, they're waiting for one stewardess to get on the plane. They could not leave without that extra person on the plane to do what? Serve drinks. Like, what? You needed to have the person to leave? The, like, yeah, CrowdStrike. Hey, Artsy, yeah, that's what it was. That was a fun day to work in IT, no doubt. No doubt. Um, so, anyway... We, we were trying to figure out getting a flight from another airport an hour away. That would have been the next day. We would have had to stay overnight to, to get that. And then when we came back, we would have had to get, we would have come back to the same airport we were at at 11 p.m. at night and be an hour away from where our car was. So we we're trying to figure out friends or family to take us to the airport. And then we just decided, that's a very small airport. Chances of if that flight gets canceled, us getting out are zero. We won't make it. So we just drove to where we were connecting three hours away and stayed over there and rerouted everything through there. So it all worked out. Uh, we missed a day of vacation. Oh, no. Oh, no. Um, we'll be fine. But that's just part of it. It's your attitude towards things, and you're judging other people that they might not have had control of. 
or over. Uh, all of your deeds. All of your deeds. That's a horrible thought, honestly, I think. I, mm, I don't want all of my deeds rewarded according to what I do. Um, it makes me want to do more things that should be rewarded, but frankly, I'm more inclined to do things that won't be rewarded. Okay. Uh, he will reward each one according to his works. Eternal life for those who by perseverance in good works seek glory and honor and immortality, but wrath and anger to those who live in selfish ambition and do not obey the truth, but follow unrighteousness. Uh, this selfish ambition here. Boy, does that creep in. I know. It's a scary thought. Selfish ambition. Like, whenever I find myself being, um, like, one of those, like, you know, people say, what would Jesus do? Um, I think that's great in the moment to think about. I, I, I like that thought. Um, but honestly, um, I think the thought, what would Jesus say if he were here right now watching you do or say what you're doing is a more horrifying thought. You know, like I want, I want an emote of Jesus shaking his head. You know, I just, just shaking my head emote of Jesus. That's what I want. I just want that emote to pop up, you know, like in my glasses, get a little thing that just pops up an emote of Jesus, just shaking my head. And, um, you're going, oh, man, I need to change what I'm doing. Because, frankly, every time I, I, I put myself first, it doesn't turn out. You think it's gonna. You think it'll be. But when you put yourself, it just doesn't turn out good for me. But I keep trying it. Like, it's going to work next time. Um, I'm watching. When it comes to being at 7, to me, that's the reward. 7, I don't know if that's AM or PM. I know the Bible says that we will get crowns and things you did on earth. I'm just going to be glad to have me, knowing the judgment is still come. Go, go, sorry, going to come to the saints. That makes me nervous. Yeah, going to heaven. Okay, yeah, being in heaven, being at. Okay, that was seven. <laughs> like that didn't make sense. Okay, going to heaven. Yes. I saw the Nike commercial during the Olympics. Am I a bad person? The whole thing was pushing yourself to be a winner, even at the cost of others. Concluding that with something like, some people aren't meant to be winners, just we live in a very selfish world. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just going to rewrite the entire thing. No, it's okay. I was just off on the one thing. I got it. We're good. Um, well... I, I think advertisers and and Nike is one who's learned and figured this out a long time ago. They play on the selfishness of people. They absolutely do. The whole "Be Like Mike" campaign was all you have to do to be the winner, to be thought of as the winner, is to wear the same shoe that the winner wears. Um. So. Yeah, the whole selfishness thing. Yeah, or just do it. Yeah, like they 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 know how to do that. They know how to play on the selfishness of people. Absolutely, um, but most advertisers do. The what people will think of you when you have the product that they 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 are trying to sell you. The how it will make you feel. The how you will be perceived. All of that. That play does play on on selfishness all over the place. You do not watch the news or regular TV. I stream old shows. Definitely uh, do not like the new shows they have these days. Yeah, there's a lot that's, I don't think, well, I'm not a fan of shows that degrade a person and just poke fun of and laugh at a person. I don't have a problem with laughing with people. But when you just degrade somebody for a joke, to me, I, that's not funny. <clears throat> and there's not a lot of lessons taught in anything anymore either. Like, like I'm gonna, I'm just gonna pick on Lassie for a minute. Somebody learned a lesson in Lassie. There was usually a moral lesson to learn in Lassie when you when you watched it, or uh, 
some of those older shows with the kids in it, Leave It to Beaver, there was a moral lesson to learn. There we go. You rewrote it? That's oh, all good. Okay. Um, yeah, and, and we just did Amos, Amos, for those who were here, um, who, who was saying, stop wishing for the day of the Lord. Stop wishing for it. You know it's going to be destruction, not just destruction for, every, for them, for everyone. It's going to be horrible. Quit wishing judgment to be here. Yeah, our Father knows best. Yeah. We don't have shows like that, whether they were uh, single dad, single mom, Western or modern setting. We don't have shows like that that have teaching lessons about stuff. You learned about quicksand in Lassie. <laughs> yes, Amos, the Canadian prophet. Exactly. Okay. Uh, yeah, selfish ambition. That's where I got to sidetracked. Imagine that. There will be affliction and distress on everyone who does evil, on the Jew first and also the Greek. Oh, wait, 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 what? There will be affliction and distress on everyone, but glory and honor and peace for everyone who does good, for the Jews first and also the Greek. For there is no partiality with God. So, your righteous judgmentalism and condemnation of people far from God rather than love of people far from God is not what we're supposed to do. For all have sinned apart from the law. Sorry. For all who have sinned apart from the law will also perish apart from the law, and all who have sinned under the law will be judged under the law. So, Okay, so if you're Greek, you'll be judged on what you had and understood. If you understood general revelation that there is a God who created all things and you should be seeking out that God and you don't, you're judged on what you know and understand. But if you had and you understood the law of Moses and were given the law of Moses, you have to live up to the standard of which you were given. So, um, just a different way of thinking about this perhaps you know what an automobile is as a child. You have no training and understanding of how the motor works, how to drive the vehicle, nor have you been given the keys to the vehicle. So, you can still be judged for your treatment of the car. If you get it dirty, if you smear stuff all over the place, if, if you, I don't know, blow your nose on the seat, whatever you're doing as a kid, you could still get in trouble for those things. However... As an adult who has the keys to the car, if you run off the road into a ditch and you take a couple mailboxes out along the way, yeah, ooh, I know, I was trying to think of something gross that you could get punished for. Um, you're going to have a moving violation for, for doing those things because you know better. So you're judged according to the standard of your ability to use the motor vehicle. So... I'm just trying to give two different levels of standard there. So, apart from the law, Gentiles. Those with the law, Gentiles. You're judged according to what you have. For it is not those who hear the law who are righteous before God, but those who do the law will be declared righteous. So, hearing doesn't change your status. Doing changes your status. For whenever the Gentiles, who do not have the law, but by nature the things required by the law, those who do not have the law are a law to themselves. They show that the work of the law is written in their hearts as their conscience bears witness and their conflicting thoughts accuse or else defend them on the day when God will judge the secrets of human hearts according to my gospel through Jesus Christ. So, Gentiles have a conscience that tells them that selfish deeds that exploit other people are wrong, and they choose to do them anyway. 
They tells that like we have a conscience given to us. We have secrets in the human heart, and God is going to judge them. Let me just see what this note is on my gospel. Uh, it's a couple of times. So it's also in 16 and in Timothy. But if, bum, 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 if you call yourself a Jew and rely on the law and boast of your relationship to God and know his will and approve the superior things because you received instruction from the law, and if, bum, 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 you are convinced that you yourself are a guide to the blind, a light to those in darkness, an educator of the senseless, a teacher of little children, because you have in the law the essential features and knowledge and of the truth. Therefore, you who teach something else, do you not teach yourself? You who preach against stealing, do not steal. You who tell others to not commit adultery, do not commit adultery. You abhor idols, do not rob temples. You who boast in the law, disobey God by transgressing the law. For as it is written, the name of God is being blasphemed against the Gentiles because of you. Okay, we were just talking about the Olympics. There is a whole bunch of that this could just be changed. And instead of saying, you yourself a Christian and you rely on the Bible and you boast about your relationship of God and you know his will and you approve of the superior things of what you have received and understood from your church. And if you're convinced that you yourselves are guides to the blind and the... Don't you know that you're teaching these things and you're not doing them? That's his point. That's his point, which also was what Jesus was accusing the Pharisees of at times. You lay on burdens upon people that aren't even in the law. You require more and above and beyond of them, which I think we do today when we say, you have to be in church on Sunday. Where does scripture say that? It's not a requirement in there. It says that we need to gather together as believers. That's what it says. Don't forsake the gathering together. What is the gathering together? Well, we've got a lot of room to figure that out. Doesn't have to be on Sunday. Doesn't have to be for a worship service. It doesn't have to be any of those things. Those are beneficial things, but those aren't the marker of things. So we could just easily change this where Paul is talking to the Jew who thinks they're superior, superior to the Gentiles and flip this to say, to you who are a Christian, who claim to be Christian, and against the world, or something that you are now condemning within the world, take your hot political topic, insert here, and go, hmm, what would Paul write? Well, this is pretty much, I think, what Paul would write in regards to those things. And it doesn't mean that those things that we would want to condemn aren't things worthy of condemnation. It's just not on us to condemn them. It's on us to live out love and demonstrate a different way to do it. Now he's going to go to where, where they're putting their value. For circumcision has its value if, bum, 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 if you practice the law. But if, bum, bum. Bum, bum. If you break the law, your circumcision has become uncircumcision. Therefore, if bum, 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 the uncircumcised man obeys the righteous requirements of the law, will not his uncircumcision be regarded as circumcision? And the physically uncircumcised man, by keeping the law, will be judged you to be a transgressor of the law, even though you have the letter and circumcision. For a person is not a Jew who is outward, one outwardly, nor is circumcision something that is outward in the flesh. But someone is a Jew who is one inwardly, and a circumcision is of the heart by the Spirit and not by the letter. The person's praise is not from people but from God. So, 
doesn't matter what your boasting is in. I'm a Christian. I've attended church all my life. I got saved and blah, 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 blah. I did this and it was at this and I went forward and I've been baptized whenever. What, what does it have to do with how you're living today? How you're treating people? I think that's what Paul's getting at. You have disdain for people around you. You are condemning of people around you. You should be loving of people around you. Yes, you're absolutely right. They're far away from God. What did you expect? Uh, I don't understand on the boasting. Uh, Say like me, for instance, buy groceries for someone and you tell someone about it. Does that mean you are boasting about yourself uh, but not meaning to boast? Is that wrong? Oh, okay. Good question. Good question. Inception. (laughs) Yeah. Um, great question, mom, boss lady. Okay. So they, they're, they're, they are Jewish and they are boasting against Gentiles because they have circumcision, because they are children of Abraham. So, um, I think in some regards, um, what this would, would have to do on some level, um, it is where I would hear this. I'll give you some examples that might not fully apply to you, but, um, there are people that I know who boast about the fact I've never drank alcohol. I've never smoked. Um, I've, I've never done illegal drugs um, or, or whatever any category you want to um, throw in there uh, with behaviors that you would say are unbecoming of a Christian and things you need to put aside after becoming a Christian. Well, if you grew up in a Christian church and a Christian household, you were told not to do those things. You, you either avoided them and then later learned you shouldn't desire them and decided never to do them. You now, therefore, will hear people boasting about the fact, I've never had alcohol in my entire life. I've never touched a cigarette. I've never done illicit drugs. I've never sped. I've never, whatever it is. It's a boasting that shows you as a righteous person by something that you inherited Um, from childhood because frankly the circumcision you have as a child was not something you chose it was something given to you by your parents so it's 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 going along those lines of things yeah i think you could boast about helping someone um and you could choose to do it that way i don't think a lot of people are doing that of boasting of hey i had a homeless person it'd be more of a god gave me an opportunity like i've told stories before of um Hearing the Holy Spirit during COVID when I was driving back and forth to my mom's or my sister's, which is, or sorry, sister or daughter, all five hours away at the time. Hey, um, take that cash with you. And then having an opportunity where somebody needed cash and I gave them cash. I don't tell that story because I want to boast about myself. I, I was like going, why would I need to take cash with me? I don't ever take cash with me, but an opportunity presented itself. And I was able to bless someone else because I listened and was obedient. So I trying to point to God and obedience and say, hey, if, if the spirit tells you to do something, it seems weird. Just do it. Uh, there's your Nike commercial for you. So, um, but this is boasting in other ways. Like um, uh, I, I, re- I remember a pastor who, um, uh, and, and I know he was boasting on one level, but I also think it was a, a level of honor for him uh to say i've never missed a day of church i never missed a sunday of church in my life and then he fell off he was he was helping someone move he fell off the back of a a pickup truck broke his leg and was in the hospital on sunday and uh he he had to confess about uh, uh boasting about never missing a day of church in his life and then having his leg broken and uh he missed a day of church and he had to be like in his 60s or something. So um, I don't know if that helps. Say more if you have more questions on the boasting thing. I hope I, I hit it. Hap. Uh, but we still need to be obedient. Oh, totally. Faith without works is dead. And why do you come? Oh, totally, Hap. Totally. Um, I'm trying to say behavior is the important thing. Behavior is the important thing. Yes. Not the boasting about it. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. Yes. And oh, you, you put the other one in. Yeah. Um, it doesn't seem to let you do more than one anymore on the update. So 
Uh, and why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things I say? Totally. Anything I can say I've never done, I see it as a shred. Uh, to me, it's just statement of fact. Oh, yeah, sometimes it is. <clears throat> well, for the record, I have never smoked. So there, I said it. <laughs> yes, it's the way you tell your story. Totally, totally it is. Because you can say, I've never smoked. That's just like a, yeah, it's just a fact. But if I'm going and condemning people who are smoking and saying, I've never, well, circumstances might have led to them. Do I'll give you a different example. So um, uh, a friend of mine says his first memory as a kid was with a beer can in his hand. And there's a photo of him like five or six years old with a beer can in his hand. And his family used to let him drink as a kid. Um because they thought it was funny the way he acted. Well, he grew up to be an alcoholic. If he had different parents that had treated him differently and had prevented him from doing that, his life would be entirely different. So my bragging to him of anything that my parents did of saying, no, there's no alcohol, you don't do that, or if you're going to have it, it's going to be responsible. And this is what... they're, they're two different stories. My boasting about anything is is degrading of, of his circumstances. So, but there's a, another, hey, Star Fox, at mom, I think it would be okay to tell someone, but if you're going around with a chin up and chest out and hollering uh, that, yeah, holier than now attitude, it'd be wrong. Yeah, the holier than now attitude is the, is the thing. It's that my behavior is better than your behavior. Not the, yeah, well, I'll just say, I, I'm not taking drugs. Why? Not because I'm smarter than anyone else. I'm worried about getting caught. Honest, not not about whether I think it's good or bad. <clears throat> um, I didn't drink in high school. School Why? I was worried about getting caught. Not about whether it was right or wrong. It was about punishment. And I didn't want <clears throat> punishment to interfere with other things in my life. So, there you go. Why do I not drink and drive? Punishment. That's why. The punishment is severe. So, hopefully I'll never do it. Usually, I think a person that drinks and drives is impaired in judgment and makes a bad judgment. Not that they're malicious in any way, which is why I think the way we treat treat it should be different and that we should have mechanisms that help people to know they're impaired rather than no mechanism to help people know they're impaired unless they've already had a problem. Mom, uh, okay. Just recently, I've heard a friend say they've never smoked or drank but yet the same for the same reason they believe that Jesus is an idol that part I don't understand <clears throat> either just uh, recently things are coming to light that I'm not understanding not exactly confused because I know God isn't about confusion um, say more about the the Jesus is an idol if you can Um, is it because what it could be, for instance, Protestants usually do not have Jesus on the cross and Catholics do have Jesus on the cross. And so is it <clears throat> an image thing of, of Jesus or is it a different thing? That's what I'm just trying to get at. Is it an image or is it something else? Ah, wait, next. Backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud boasters. Inventors of evil, things disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful. I love all the uns. Who, knowing the righteous judgment of God for those who practice such things, who deserve, who are deserving of death, not only do the same thing, but also approve of those who practice. Yeah, that's another part, too. I don't think I focused on is the, um, I approve of other people who do the same thing. Why? Because if... If everybody's doing it, then it's okay for me to do it. Uh, wait, I learned this from the same person that did the app. You can do next with chapter, with up to two verses or more. Um, he was doing it, Pastor Jason. Oh, yeah, yeah, you can do next, yes. You can do previous, too, I think. I think you're right. Okay, I don't know about the number with next either. And I know, <clears throat> it, so next three did work. That's cool. 
Thank you for sharing that. I didn't know you could do a number of it, but uh, like I said, when people were post started posting two separate chapters and verses, it no longer is accepting the two. It just takes the first one and doesn't read any of them that come after that. So, okay. Um, I do see ways in which we can make idols out of out of things that we don't usually think of. Like, I can make Sunday morning an idol. Why? Because. I have to be there, and I evaluate everybody on their participation in a Sunday morning activity. Or I judge people being on in the right building on a Sunday morning, because I can judge other people down the street as not Christian, as not worthy, as not followers of Jesus. Uh, I can judge people on all kinds of things, and I can make an idol out of whether you stay for Sunday school or not because you're not a real Christian because you only came for worship and you left. You didn't go to Sunday school. Oh, and you don't come on Wednesday night? Oh, my goodness. You're not in the choir? Oh, my goodness. I can just continually raise my level of superiority over someone else because they don't do the thing that I am doing. So we can do that with a lot of things. Uh, she's read the OT and refuses to read the New Testament saying that Jesus was idolized about he how he healed people and raised people from the dead. The human sacrifice was wrong, and she doesn't believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Says she's a Christian. Not trying to judge her. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Mom, boss, lady, that is uh, not um, uh, someone thinking that I've run into, but that's very interesting. So, it's an OT follower of Jesus who doesn't follow the New Testament. That is really odd to me. Um, that doesn't want to read, doesn't think Jesus is the Son of God, doesn't think in the sacrifice, and, do, and doesn't want to read the New Testament. I don't know how you claim to be a Christian then. Uh, I'm not saying that she can't be. I'm just saying, aside from the gospel, the good news of Jesus why would you claim to be Christian and only follow the Old Testament? Wouldn't you just want to claim to be Jewish and a Messianic Jew, but maybe you're not Jewish biologically, descendant of Abraham, so you don't want to make that claim? I don't know. That's totally unusual, Mom Boss Lady, and I think your approach of just love her, um, ask questions uh, at times, and also ask for your ability to share stuff. So, you could perhaps, on anything we've talked about today, go to her and say, Hey, I'm watching this streamer who was reading in the book of Romans today. Would it be okay if I shared some questions that came up in that, just to see what your thoughts are on them? And just come from the curious side of things. Maybe, maybe that would be an opening uh, of a door for her. Would be horrible moving forward with the Bible without the, the good news. Yeah. Yeah, I was going to say that she was probably Jewish. <clears throat> That's my only thought, but you'd have to almost be Messianic. That, that's the closest I can think of a, a label, and I don't mean we need to put a label on, on, a, peop, on, on a person. Okay. Okay. The Messianic people not sure if she's claiming the Jew part. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and there's there's different levels of that too, but that makes sense. Okay. We have another therefore starting a chapter. What is the therefore? Based on what we just read, based on what we just read, on whether it is circumcision of the heart and what circumcision of the heart leads to actually doing things, not circumcision in the skin doesn't actually lead to doing things, but a circumcision of the heart. If your heart has been changed to, and your heart should be changed to a heart of repentance, a heart of repentance wants to live out the things. So Paul is making a distinction here between living things out and just being in the right group. Therefore, what advantage does the Jew have? Or what is the value of circumcision? Actually, there are many advantages. Oh, oh, okay. So we go back to what I was saying earlier. <clears throat> the, Jew, 
The Jewish people thought Jesus was a uh, kind of prophet. Some do and some some don't, Lucis. Um, just depends on what um, strain of, of Jewish. There's Reformed Jews. There's Orthodox Jews. There's more than ascetic Jews. I don't know all the different categories. Uh, but just like there's denominations, there's different sects of Judaism. So you try to avoid the conversation because I'm not sure how to explain it. Uh, to how Christ did die on the cross for our sins or where she'd understand what you're trying to say. Yeah, and that's fair. Uh, hey, chill, Will. Um, but I'm just thinking, too, you could just open conversations and just say, you don't know the answer. <clears throat> you say, I just watch a guy. And we were talking about this. What do you think? And then say, I didn't know what to think. So you don't have to have answers. Mm. Maybe you can point to other people. That was my thought of Opening the conversation if you had an opportunity. Uh, good morning, sir. Hope you and chat are well. May the peace of our Lord, or the oh, sorry, peace of our Father and the grace of our Lord be with you all today. Thank you, Chillwell. That was awesome. Awesome blessing. Okay. Therefore, what advantage does the Jew have? Or what is the value of circumcision? Oh, ad break snuck in there. I got no warning this time. Sorry, everybody. We'll go over to the fish. Maybe, maybe we can see the pond or the, the g baby koi this Black time. Cat pastor rocks his tweed, streaming life by the reeds. Fish pond calm and glassy clear, view it all right from here. Dapper man with Saxon hair, plays tunes by his quiet land. Acoustic guitar in the breeze Serenades the fish with ease Watch the fish, they swim along To the rhythm of his song Flat cat pastor so shows big. the way Stream it live, come what may With his cam, he shows it all Little fish, both big and small. Life in ponds so serene. Nature's beauty on a screen. See the ripples, watch the flow. Hear the music, gentle glow. Flat caps, charm, and calming tone makes the fish feel right at home. Watch the fish. All right. Chill, Will. I will never forget your precepts. God, for by them you have preserved my life. That is a great, great attitude. So, all right. Uh, it didn't tell me the ad was coming this time, so I couldn't freeze it and delay it. But we're okay. I think we'll do one more chapter today. <clears throat> we'll do Romans 3. Since, I like, it's therefore, it's still moving on. We have to remember... Where have we been? What Paul is doing. Paul is writing to believers. And he is talking about their actions and behaviors as believers. Their attitudes and judgments towards people who are not believers, but who are like they may have formerly been. Or are these the Jews within the church having problems with the Gentiles within the church? Could be some of those other things going on. Let's see as we keep going. But he does say there are benefits and advantage to being Jewish. <clears throat> we could also maybe see if this applies to There are advantages to growing up in a Christian family. Or what is the value of circumcision? Or what is the value of growing up in a Christian home and a church? Actually, there are many advantages. First of all, the Jews were entrusted with the oracles of God. What then if, bum, 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 if some were unfaithful. Their unfaithfulness will not nullify God's faithfulness, will it? Absolutely not. Let God be proven true and every human being show up as a liar, just as is written, so that you will be justified in your words and will prevail when you are judged. So, if Jews had the law and they done messed up, A.A. Ron, and it was all relying on them to live according to the law fully, then God wouldn't have been able to do anything. They didn't. 
God still did. God's still proven true, even if the followers of God are proven untrue. So if Christians follow God and they don't follow God, uh, God is not unproven uh, because we don't follow God. We're people. We done messed up. Uh, Mom, I'd love to get a blue flat cap to wear it to keep your dad's memory on in your heart. And head, but the rent going up 50 bucks. I can't afford anything starting next month. I'm disabled, so budget is going extremely tight. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that your rent is going up. Um, I'm gonna guess that maybe you're not on rent controls then, if that's the case. But I was gonna say, if you want to DM me. I can show you the link to the one blue hat that I had that was super cheap so that when you you uh, do decide you want to get one, you could you could check that one out. But if bum 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 if our unrighteousness demonstrates the righteousness of God, what shall we say? The God who inflicts wrath is not unrighteous is he i am speaking in human terms absolutely not for otherwise how could god judge the world for if bum 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 if by my lie the truth of god enhances his glory why am i still actually being judged as a sinner and why not say let us do evil so that good may come of it as some who slander us allege that we say their condemnation is deserved. Okay, so apparently Paul keeps getting this reputation that says, do whatever you want because God will save you and forgive you. And he's like, that's not what I'm teaching. It is not what I'm teaching. I am not teaching grace covers everything, do whatever you want, You know, eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow you die. No, it's not. Yes, yes, the fact is, when I sin and God gives me grace, it points to God. But when I also love my neighbor and I do good, it points to God. God can take evil and turn it into good. It is not the intent of God to use evil, to be good, because evil isn't good. So, um... Uh... <laughs> as always i always expect your hugs i'm a huge hugger i am too irl i am a hugger so if we're ever irl hugs 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 oh by the way i haven't mentioned it today reach con if you're interested in reach con oh you know what i do have commands here i haven't done this either dc 4 c uh i need to get these posted in my discord for my mods but there are uh, more commands now, and they're up for Digital Creators for Christ, which I'm a part of. Thank you for getting Reach uh, uh, in there. Uh, so Reach Conference, IRL Meetup. There's others who are doing it. Um, I will be there. I am so looking forward to That's about 40 days from now. And we'll be in Orlando. I, I might, might do live streaming while I'm there. Um, I might still do it there. We'll have to see what happens. So it's Friday and Saturday. I think I'm flying on Friday, so maybe I won't be able to. But uh, maybe I'll just do live phone rando things. We get closer, I'll let you know. But if you are able to, you're in Orlando. It is Friday <clears throat> and Saturday. You want free tickets. Put the code DAPPER in for ReachCon. You'll get a free ticket to go. And I got stuff posted on my socials as well. So anyway. Come to Alabama, to my town. <laughs> I didn't plan it. it. It was planned for Orlando. You're always chill. We'll take a hug as well. I probably make people uncomfortable at church by giving hugs because we need it sometimes. Yeah, you know what I did have down at the, the marketplace a couple of weeks ago? Um, one of the people I did not know real well um, was sharing about the just the stuff happening in her life and i said do you need a hug can i give you a hug so i invited it because it felt appropriate because our relationship wasn't one of let me just hug you it was 
I think you need this. Let me let me do that for you. Hey, Matt Diller, welcome in. Yeah, you do be, try to be mindful of strangers. That's why you do the can. Yes. You're accepting a mushiness. Too true that. Okay. So let me just see. Where were we at? We were. Oh. The unrighteousness demonstrates the righteousness of God. God demonstrates his righteousness when we are righteous. God demonstrates his righteousness when we choose to be unrighteous. Either way, God demonstrates himself to constantly be who he is. If I'm righteous and he rewards me and blesses me, that shows who God is. If I'm unrighteous and God judges me and condemns me, that also choose, shows his to be righteous. But I don't need to do the one to prove him to be the other. What then? Are we better off? Certainly not. For we have already charged the Jews and the Greeks alike are all under sin. For it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands. There is no one who seeks God. All have turned away. Therefore, they have become worthless. There is not one who shows kindness, not even one. Their throats are open graves. They deceive with their tongues. They poison The poison of asp is under their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Ruin and misery are in their past. And the way of peace they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. So this is a quotation from Psalm 36. So anything Paul was saying earlier about the Gentiles in condemnation, he has then got brought the Jews in as well, and he says, we are all equally under condemnation. Stop being, I'm a Jew and I'm better than everyone else. Stop being for us today. I'm a Christian and therefore I'm better than the world. No, we are all under condemnation. There is no one righteous, not even one. I mean, in the list here, you might say, oh, well, I've never been swift to shed blood. Maybe not physically, but emotionally, um, maybe you have. Maybe you have. Mentally, maybe you have. Spiritually, maybe you have. Maybe not physically, but we we harm people in other ways. <laughs> LOL watching. I'm mushies as well. I love hugs and just sometimes for someone to just, hey, love you. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood. Totes, totes. I was going to say, too, there was a recent study that talked about the length of a hug. And there are biological and physical and mental health benefits from a hug that lasts more than six seconds. So most of the hugs that we do, they're not, you, you, you got to get in there and commit to the hug. And then hold it to really, so when someone is in that need of a hug, don't just give the hug and release. Give the hug. And when they go to release, hug again. So they know the depth of the hug. That's that's going to be my new thing I'm trying to work on. You have a friend who checks on me daily and says, Hey, sis, how are you? Love you. Makes me feel like I'm loved because there are times I feel no one cares. Yeah, mom, boss, lady. I, you know, we all have that. We all have that. No matter um, who we are, we can have times where we feel like no one cares, even when we're surrounded by people. Uh, one of my favorite songs, um, the lyrics say, "I feel so alone in a room full of pe in a world full of people." Um, but it's, it's really about understanding and knowing and checking in and those things. And it's 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 so difficult to say. I have to tell you, I had a bad day for you to ask me if I had a bad day. Like check in on me, people. Ask me how I'm doing. Uh, I've I've started doing more and more. When someone says, 
you know, hey, how you doing? Oh, doing good. And I and I was like, your your face didn't agree with what you said. Are you really okay? Is something else going on? And I invite more exploration on that. I try to do that. Um, actually, I started doing that a while ago. Yeah, yeah, to check up on you in your Discord all the time. Yeah, I have people that do that with me too. I try. I, well, I try to whenever I think of someone, do that. Um, but I. I am not good at the daily check-in with people. I am the, you came to mind, I want to check on you. You fight depression daily. Yes, uh, I'm married. September 1st will be 32 years, but yet I feel so alone and lonely. Totally understand, mom, boss lady. Um, so, let me try to think here. So, let's see, 32 years... Would mean you were married in 92. Is that right? When people ask me, how are you doing? I always pause and think and give an honest answer. And it always throws people off. Oh, man, that's awesome. That's awesome. Okay. So, you are three. You were married 375 days before I was. 375 days before I got married. So, I don't know. I keep, like, the last two years, I keep adding the, like, I feel like I've, I don't know. I keep adding to the number, and I can never get it right. So, okay. Uh, oh, anyway, I did start this, I think, in uh, when I was in seminary, and I would pass friends going back and forth to class and say, hey, how you doing? And go, oh, you, know, you just kind of do that. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Um, kind of a thing. And I just started going, no, are, are you really doing okay? Are you really good? I just do a double check of it. Are you really good? I think that's when I started doing that. And December 2nd in 1993, your daughter was born. Aww. That's awesome. Uh, look for the book, The Voice of the Heart by Chip Dodd. Uh, it would be very beneficial for understanding the feeling and how to handle it biblically. Oh, don't know that one. Okay. Um, uh, trying to figure out where we were at. Oh, that's where we were. Finished the quotation. Okay. Now we know... That whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For no one is declared righteous before him by the works of the law. For through the law comes the knowledge of sin. But apart from the law, the righteousness of God, although it is attested by the law and the prophets, has been disclosed namely the righteousness of God through the faithfulness of Jesus Christ for all who believe. So it is through the faithfulness of Jesus Christ, the righteousness of God through the faithfulness of Jesus Christ for all those who believe. That is such a weird phrasing of things. The faithfulness is through the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. The righteousness of God is through the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. The full demonstration of the righteousness of God is through the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. I, it's just beautiful. For all who have... Oh, sorry. I don't know what I just clicked there. Oh. I think I clicked the side thing. Can we get back? Shoot, we were in three. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I clicked the little side thing here when I meant to scroll, I think. Okay. There is. For all who believe. Okay. She wasn't spoken to me in... Oh, she wasn't spoken to me in over a year because I won't... Yeah supply her drug money i was giving her grocery money which i thought were for her and your granddaughter when you found out they what it was really for i stopped giving her money yeah sorry about that 
Um, one of the now I know you, you're fixed income in in, in that circumstance, uh, but one of the things that I try to do for people is give them the thing that is going to be used for what they're going to use it for. So, and I know people can exchange this, but if I were someone needed gas, I'd buy a gas card. If someone needed uh, groceries, I'd, I'd buy a card for a grocery store. Not that you can't use it for other, other things, or you couldn't sell that card and, and, and do other things. Uh, but I try to make it more difficult in that. And, and when possible, I give you exactly what you need. So I'd go with you, fill your gas tank up uh, if I'm able to do that. I know circumstances don't always allow that. Or if you're hungry and you're on the corner, take you in and buy you a meal and sit with you and have a meal. Family's a bit different and uh, it can become awkward. So sorry about that, mom, boss, lady. Okay. Um, okay. For there is no distinction... For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Oh, wait, wait, wait. There's no distinction. We missed that part of this verse. We want to just go, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Both Gentiles and Jews. There's no distinction. There's no distinction between Christian and non-Christian. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But they are justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. God publicly displayed him at his death at the mercy seat accessible through faith. This was demonstrate this it was to demonstrate righteousness because God in his forbearance had passed over the sins previously committed. This was also to demonstrate his righteousness in the present time so that it would be just and the justifier of the one who lived because of Jesus's faithfulness. So again, we're returning to Jesus's faithfulness is the thing that demonstrates the righteousness of God. That's the righteousness of God is the demonstration of Jesus, not anything we do. There's not a distinction between. So, uh, mom, if even tried to get her to come get, come get me and take her grocery shopping, that didn't work. I'm, I'm, and I was not saying you hadn't tried things. I was simply stating some other options I had I've tried in the past too. So yeah, that's a that's a hard thing. <laughs> which was which also at times is weird when you know I get a I'm trying to like have my phone off while I'm on vacation and so my son had texted me but my phone was in the in the room and in the safe so I wasn't using it the whole time on vacation and my wife had hers. Um, and so he had to message her and say, hey, uh, can you tell dad I need some money? Can he send me money? I had a problem and I'm going to bounce a check. And I, so it's like, I guess I had to go get my phone and uh, send my kids some money uh, while on vacation. So unfortunate things happen. Okay. Where then is boasting? If you're justified through Jesus Christ, where is your boasting? Quit boasting about how I am a Christian. I would never do that. I know he's talking about Jews and Gentiles. I think this is the same application. We as Christians want to boast about we'd never do that. I and my denomination might boast about or above another denomination that we don't believe that, we don't practice that, we would never do such a thing. When we boast in the results of what God has done, we need to stop doing it. It is excluded by what principle of works? No, no, but by the principle of faith. For we consider that a person is declared righteous by faith, a part of the works of the law. Or is God a God of the Jews only? Is he not the God of the Gentiles too? Yes, of the Gentiles too. Since God is one, he will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through faith. Do we not nullify the law through faith? Absolutely not. Instead, we uphold the law. So, faith is the action of upholding the law. Following Jesus is the action of upholding the faith of Jesus. 
the good news of Jesus. We do it through faith. Faith is lived out. Faith is not intellectual. Faith is the actions of which we live out our life. Uh, I hate the interruptions here. I hate to stop, but uh, thank you for everything, but need to go make a phone call to the doctors and credit card place. Love you guys. Have a blessed day, night. Thank you, mom, boss, lady. Thank you. Hope yours is blessed as well. Okay. Uh, I think it's actually a good place to, to break is uh, chapter four here. So we'll pick up chapter four tomorrow. So, but one through three. Okay, look at how one flowed into two, flowed into three. Nobody is without excuse. Every single person has natural evidence that there is a God. When there's natural evidence, you should seek out that God. You should explore that. The Jews had this. They're without excuse. They had the law, but you don't live apart from the law. You live by faith. It's not a sign that was the thing that you were living by. You weren't living by, let me show you my membership card. Which might be another reason why we shouldn't have membership in church. But uh, that's a different, different topic. But I am part of this community. I'm within this community. I live by the standards of the community. No, I live by the standards of God. I'm seeking after God. By faith, I demonstrate my understanding of what God has done through Jesus for me. Therefore, I live according to what he has commanded and out of gratitude for what he's already done. I seek to be less self-serving, self-seeking, and seek to love God and love my neighbor. That is what Paul has said so far. And repentance is, a, is what should be the result of understanding of who Jesus is and what he's done and his righteousness. That should be what it is. I turn from what I'm doing that is selfish. I repent from it and I seek after God and I seek after Jesus and I seek to follow. And I'm not going around condemning other people and looking at myself and saying, look at me. Look at me and look what I've done and I'm superior to everyone else. It's not the way it is. So, all right. Let me just scroll a second. Yeah, this is going to be another in-depth kind of section there. Okay. So, let me see. I marked through one through three. There we go. Which was one, two, three, four, five days of reading. We got through five days of reading today. Oh, and they're splitting 15, or verse 14. Oh, which I don't have a split in here. Huh, that's interesting. They're putting a split there. Okay. Well, let's find someone to go and raid then. Bum, ba -da -bum, bum, bum. <laughs> you did good. Thank you. Thank you. You know, getting back from vacay is not always, not always the easiest time to do it. You, oh, you put it in for Uncle Diddy? I did not see that. Oh, thanks. I missed it. Thanks. Yeah, we can just go to Uncle Diddy. Oh, thank you. Thank you. All right. it's, it's good to be back. I'm not fully back in the swing of things, but, boy, Romans was... Romans was a good read today. Praise report. He's feeling better since his sickness last week. Okay. And I was not around. I saw something about it, but I did not see a lot of deets on it. Looks like he might be doing some enjoying worship, maybe. Um, oh, let me get, uh, blessing and then raid out. Yeah, effect, infection in his foot? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, infection. May God's seeking comfort find you. May his loving arms bind you. May his might protect you. May his wisdom direct you. May the joyous love of Jesus Christ be with you and all those you now, both now 
forevermore. Amen. So thank you all for being here. Love you all. See you again tomorrow. Let's go. Love others. Back to new pages. Chronicles, gospels, prophets, sages. Leviticus, laws to pause, find phrases. Turning them corners, no spiritual mazes. Genesis to revelation, self-divine. Flipping scripts, endless grace you'll find. Psalm singing sweet, unbroken lines. Hitting that rhythm, wordplay refined. Anybody in here blessed? I'm blessed. Anybody in here blessed? I'm blessed. Bible in one year, we don't rest. Anybody in here blessed? I'm blessed. Wake up early, the dawn's light shimmers. Spiritual breakfast, soul food dinners. Isaiah's vision, Ezekiel's figures. Walk through the fire, no one limbers. Kings and judges, prophets profound. Need some cow the word, huh? No mythical ground. Verse after verse, wisdom's bound. Heavenly soundtrack, souls urban. Sound. Anybody in here blessed? I'm blessed. Anybody in here blessed? I'm blessed.